Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. Quite recently I received a message from a nice chap by the name of Dragon Seer. I think I'm pronouncing the name correctly, and this chap on YouTube has asked me about the Forgotten Realms campaign setting. Now, this interested me because the Forgotten Realms and Planescape is my favourite Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting. I love the extensive geography, I love the extensive lore attached to it, I love the organisations, the deities, I like uh, the vast majority of the NPCs that pop up in novels and therefore in the campaign source books as well. Forgotten Realms has so much to offer to a GM and to a player, uh, and I suppose conversely a lot of people dislike Forgotten Realms for exactly that reason. Some people prefer Greyhawk, perhaps, or Middle-earth because there's less extensive lore attached to vast swathes of land, and this means that the adventures are your own to make, whereas the Forgotten Realms is quite complete, although albeit evolving constantly due to the numerous editions of Dungeons and Dragons, the various novels that get released, the source books that get released, and the Candlekeep forum on which Ed Greenwood and various other Forgotten Realms creators, authors and the like often post their realms lore. Now, I, much like I prefer Masquerade to Requiem, prefer the meta plot, I suppose, of Forgotten Realms to Greyhawk. I like that all-encompassing world. It makes it feel more real to me. And while I would very rarely take a plot wholesale and throw it at a bunch of players, I would pillage bits and pieces, bits and pieces that I like. And so, for instance, in my Baal Spawn saga, which is clearly based on the saga of Baldur's Gate, the video games, and the children of Baal, I created my own adventures to go within it, but the general overarching theme was from the Forgotten Realms, the locations, the people, that kind of thing. And so this gentleman on YouTube asked me, what are my favourite blank in the Forgotten Realms? Please do a video on all of these things. And I, this excited me a bit because I've done a lot of videos on Vampire recently, but not many on Dungeons and & Dragons, and it is a very big role-playing game after all. So, to start, what are your favourite regions in the Forgotten Realms? Now, I'm going to restrict this to one region, in case anyone wants to make video responses about their favourite region. If you like the Forgotten Realms, or love the Forgotten Realms, then please do feel free, if you so choose, to make a video response detailing what interests you about a specific region in the FR campaign setting. Now, my favourite region is actually the Dragon Coast. The Dragon Coast being a sort of split of sea that uh, comes off the edge of the Sea of Fallen Stars in sort of central South Faerun, the large continent on which the majority of Forgotten Realms campaigns are based. Now, the Dragon Coast is bordered by a number of dock towns and cities, the largest among which is Westgate. Now, Westgate is one of my favourite cities in the Forgotten Realms. I've set many a game there, and it is almost a sort of utopia, depending on the character. It's a, it's a city in which any race, any organisation, any religion can come there and do what they will without the penalties necessarily of stringent law that might exist in somewhere like Waterdeep or Athcatla. Uh, it is a place where red wizards will be rubbing shoulders with Zentarim, and that very Zentarim may well be exchanging information with the Harpers in order to get against a cult of the dragon rival. Westgate is a criminal nexus. It is a city of thieves in the base sense, because the Night Masks, uh, an organisation of thieves, primarily now run by vampires, in fact, and that doesn't have any connection to my uh, liking for it, trust me, uh, but I do like the Night Masks as an organisation. They're thoroughly despicable and infinitely more dislikable than the Zentarim and the more basic Cult of the Dragon, but the Night Masks pretty much have more control over Westgate than the stand-in government that exists there, and the number of wars that have been fought over the rulership of Westgate, only to see that ruler get deposed a few years later, or assassinated, or just disappeared, is something that interests me. It's a city of, of constant intrigue and Machiavellian schemes, and I love that kind of 
buzzing nexus, that buzzing throng that exists within a city that never really sleeps. A city that is constantly alive with various dark deeds, where good adventurers actually feel unsure of themselves, where they can't just walk down the street necessarily in their blazing paladin of Torm armour without necessarily bumping into an illithid or a drow or maybe even a beholder who may take exception. But, largely, Westgate is a free metropolis, it, it is beholden to no higher country government, it is one of the largest uh, trading cities in Faerun, I think one of the top three in fact, and has such a stranglehold on that section of the Sea of Fallen Stars on which it borders, and the Dragon Coast being on the very, well, the crossing point, I suppose, between the Dragon Coast and the Sea of Fallen Stars, that it is so immensely powerful. And of course, if you want anything, absolutely anything, no matter how criminal, how foul, you can find it in Westgate. And one of the most interesting lore points of Westgate is how one of the Manshun clones, Manshun being one of the founders of the Zentarim, the Black Network, is in fact one of the vampires in charge of the Night Masks now. And that, but given that he is not working in concert with the Manchun in charge of the Zentarim necessarily, that means there's two Manchuns controlling two different organisations that are largely, again, at each other's throats to control the criminal network on the Dragon Coast, which is a nice sort of political thing going on there. Another city that I enjoy on the Dragon Coast, and I've set quite a few adventures here, is Elversalt. Now, the reason I like Elversalt is because it was a necromantic city once controlled by the cult of the dragon. Now, th it's easy to think of a city that's been liberated from an evil organisation. Now, the Harpers are in control. Uh, interestingly enough, the Lady Jan Seldorar leaves the policing of her city down to her consort and fellow adventurer Veyrana Hawkland, who is a woman, that's right, lesbian, sexuality in a Dungeons and Dragons game. It's always there in Forgotten Realms, if you know which lines to read between, but Elversalt is something that really appeals to me. It's a city that has been through immense trauma, because the people that live there are still the people that lived there when the cult of the dragon was in play. If you imagine the way that uh, Prague might have felt when the Nazis occupied it, ignoring any ideas that they welcome the Nazis with bunches of flowers and things like that, hurrah, our liberators, uh, <laughs> If you imagine that when the SS went and suddenly communists rolled in, the people stay the same, it's just the government that changes, the tyrants on top that changes. It might not necessarily be that harsh in Elversalt. The Cult of the Dragon uh, were completely ruling Elversalt and the Harpers took over from them. Now, the Harpers are ostensibly a better group, a fairer group, but there are a number of tyrants in their midst. What really grabs me with Elversalt is the idea of a cult running an entire city. If you think of Waco, if you think of Heaven's Gate, it, and uh, the Cult of the Dragon is very much a suicide cult because it is a cult in which many people get sacrificed to come back as undead believing that they will come back more powerful, not as just mindless drones. And a city that was domineered by this weird religion, this weird cultism that existed for decades in, in that city until the Harpers drove the Cult of the Dragon underground there, because they still exist there, but, but not to such a degree. How do you imagine that makes the people? Because I... Imagine if you went into Waterdeep, you would, most market traders, most taverns would greet you with a smile, uh, you know, and, and a drink, and they would share with you the current gossip. Whether there's a benevolent police state controlling your city or not, the previous rulers would ha have left some kind of mark on you. And the idea of Elversalt, that there's this people that have been liberated by the Harpers. Perhaps they've not all wanted to be liberated. Do you think, really, that after decades of rule from a cult, they would just be able to snap out of that fugue that they were under whilst the Cult of the Dragon were controlling them? 
Do you think that they just suddenly welcomed their liberators with open arms and fell in line with the Harpers and all of their multitude of deities? Do you think they gave up on Bane and Siric and Velsharun and whoever knows what other destructive deities the Cult of the Dragon worship? Of course, the worship of dragons as well. Elversalt is an interesting paradigm to me. I, I really enjoy that city, and I set a very long game there. In fact, I think my first Forgotten Realms Dungeons & Dragons game was set in Elversalt, and Elversalt was largely destroyed by the Avatar of Moanda at one point, but... Yeah, uh, it is one of my favourite locations. Uh, and to finalise on the Dragon Coast, not only, of course, the rumours and lore of all the various dragons that live within the sea there, whether they do or not, or whether that is just... Uh, pure, pure uh, chant spouted by Bubbers, um, is Red Ansir. Red Ansir is a small town on the Dragon Coast, and it's a very simple reason I like it. It paints a usually benevolent religion in a very odd light. Uh, a light that you could expect them to be painted in on more common occasion, and it's the Church of Ochma. Alchemer being the god of knowledge, of lore, of, of books, scribes and whatnot. Uh, admittedly, Denier, Emilio and so on report to him and hold smaller portfolios, but Alchemer is the overall god of knowledge. And he has a vast temple there. And there are many priests there. It is the primary religion of Red Ansi, a trading town on, on the ports. And you would think that that would make it a great library, like Candlekeep, where you would go in order to seek out whatever knowledge you wished for, and indeed that is correct. Red Ansir is a hive of information. It is the go-to place for adventurers to visit if they want to pick up on the local tattle. And, in fact, the most common place of doing so is a fantastic tavern, which is made of a huge longboat that was supposedly dragged ashore by a fire giant and upended, and so people go into this longboat, which is a uh, which is a tavern, upside down. And the thing is, Ogma, or rather the Church of Ogma, is fiercely jealous of the amount of information that is freely dealt in this tavern, in this huge longboat. The Ogmanites feel that information should come with a price, that people should be paying fealty to Ogma. If they want to hear the local chant, they should go to the temple and get it from the gods, get it from the priests, and pay the suitable tithe. They shouldn't just be going to a tavern and be able to exchange it for free. And so the Church of Ogma is practicing a form of censorship there, or are rather trying to, to make sure that all attempts to get information go through the Ogmanites. And I think it's a really nice inverted look at the god of knowledge and how these gods of knowledge can actually control and restrict knowledge as well as promote the dispensation of it. And yeah, it's just a really interesting idea and I think that's what grabs me about all of the major cities and towns along the Dragon Coast, Westgate, Elversal, Red Unseer, um, Illipur, Pro Camper, I think is another one. Um, they all sort of twist the norm. Many of the churches are not your orthodox varieties of churches. They're all slightly skewed or slightly corrupt. There's just something not right. And that to me appeals as realistic because of course the Russian Orthodox Church is very different from the Greek Orthodox Church and so on and so forth. Uh, different versions of the same religion exist because of the ways different people want to practice it. And what do the gods care as long as they're getting the worship thereafter, how it gets to them. And so that is to conclude my statement on why I particularly like the Dragon Coast with the Forgotten Realms. It is my favourite geographical region, and if you are interested in sharing your thoughts, please do so. Next video will be on my favourite deities within the Forgotten Realms, so thank you very much for watching.